Hello Internet! Today is a big day because I'm going to present you an highly requested um, feature for the BRICS community, which is a class manager. And uh, I'll also show you the component class manager, which is uh, a little different than the global class manager. I will show you in a moment. And a couple of new additions from this uh, 1.3 version of Advanced Themer. So let's, let's dive into it right now. And I'll show you, uh, I'll start showing you the class manager, of course. So to enable it, you have to go in the theme settings, in the builder tricks, click on top bar, and you will see this new item class manager. It's considered as experimental right now because we are, of course, uh, messing with your classes, your global classes. So um, you might not want to play with it on production website for now, just to gather uh, feedback and see if there is any uh, error coming from, uh, from the feature right now. I, I must say I, I tested quite evenly and, uh, and I, I didn't find any specific bug until now. So I'm quite confident uh, this is a stable feature, but for now it's experimental. So please don't play around on the uh, production website. Let's just save the settings for now and go back to our builder. Let's just save and refresh. Okay, so once you have activated this uh, feature in the top bar, you will see a new icon here on the top, Class Manager. Click on it and you will see a new Windows opening. Okay, um, there is a lot going on here. It doesn't seem, it, it seems quite, em quite empty, but you will see there are a lot of features that you can do. Uh, on the left, of course, you have the um, list of the classes, the global classes that uh, exist on your BRICS instance. And you have on the top of the list, you can filter these classes. We'll see it in a minute. You can, of course, select any class from the list. And you have on the right actions that you can uh, see if the class has styles, uh, if they are locked, you can duplicate, delete, and also at the bottom you can create a new class. So let's just play around with it a little bit. The first thing I want to, to show you is you can of course filter your uh, class. So if you write down grid, it will filter your grid class like you would expect it. Okay. But there are more advanced filters. The first one is a filter classes that contain styles. So if you click on it, you see it will be red. That means all the classes listed here have no styles assigned to it. Whether it's a custom CSS or the, the bricks input, the normal bricks bin input, that means these classes have nothing inside. Why is it um, relevant? Well, it's, it's relevant because um, most of the times the frameworks that add utility classes to your, to your website um, have the, the CSS on an external file. They are not uh, parsing the values inside the global classes from Bricks. So on Bricks point of view, these class these classes are empty. And so if you decided to list them uh, without styles, to filter them, there are um, a good chance that uh, the empty one will be the classes um, enqueued from a framework. So you can see on the fly which, the, which classes are from a framework. If you re-click on it, it will exclude the um, class that don't have any style. So probably these are the classes that you assign to an element and you styled it into bricks. 
So it's an easy way to filter the classes from a framework and the one you created in Cypress. If you re-click on it, you disable this filter. First one. The second one is the filter active on page. If you click on it, the first, the, the first one is the red, so it will list all the classes that are not active, that are not assigned on any element in the current page. So right now, all the classes are not assigned. If I click on it again, it will list all the classes that are active on the website, on the page, sorry. Let's just, right now it's empty. Let's just go come back here. And I'm going to add a class, for example, um, test one. Okay, reopen the class manager, filter by active on page. And you will see that my test one class is showing here. And if I uh, disable the active on page, you will see on the list, if I filter test one, it won't show up here. Okay? This is a good way to see which classes are active on the page you are, you are actually editing. Great. The third one is the filter by locked status. So you can easily see which one are locked and which one aren't locked. Okay, this is pretty straightforward, I guess. But the beauty is you can um, use this filter combined. So, for example, most of the frameworks um, enqueue the classes without styles, but also locked. So to be sure that uh, a class is probably coming from a framework, you probably want to disable the styles and also make them uh, make sure to list only the locked styles. Okay, and you can do this for all the mm, the filters here. You can play with it. And on the right, you can reset the filters. Great. That's the, for the filter part. Um, now let's just click, of course, on, on the class and let's see what's going on. I'm going to click on the test one that we just had. It. You can see now that um, it's uh, active and you'll see some information here. The first one is the name of the class. You can, of course, rename it. Let's say it, one, two, three, enter. And now the class successfully renamed. And you see on the panel, the class is renamed correctly. Um, that's for the name, the order. So the order is the order you see on the global uh, list. You see, uh, we have right now 24 global classes. And test one, two, three is 11th out of 24. You can change this order. So if you want, let's put one, enter. And now our class will show up in the first place. Okay, there is a, another way to reorder your class. It's drag and drop. Um, just drag your class on the list here. And let's put it here. And you see the order automatically change. And now it's order 9. Let's just, for the purpose of it, let's just open our class. Now, here it is already applied. And, um, oh, sorry, I put on 9. Let's put on first. Let's change the order, enter. Let's open it and test one, two, three is now first on our drop down here. Great. Um, okay, that's for the order. I want, I want to mention that these order work when there is no filter applied. Okay, if you apply a filter like this, you won't be able to drag anymore because the drag and drop needs to 
display all your classes in order to drag and drop correctly into the uh, into the the list. But you can of course change it manually, changing here the the order number. Okay, you can change the status. Okay, from locked to un to unlocked. Uh, by the way, you can um, do this in the list as well. So if you click on the icon, it will change the locked status. And since our test one two three is active, we can see that the class here is used one time on the following element, and it will um, show all the elements where this class is applied. And if I click on it, it will open my section, uh, let's say I was on heading, right? Open the class manager and click on section. It will be back on the section where my test one, two, three is applied. So you can easily jump on the elements where the uh, class is currently applying. Great, you can also apply custom CSS to the class directly from the class manager. And it's, um, it's packed with the, all the advantages, advantages of the superpower CSS. And it also supports the roots, just like in the custom CSS control of bricks. So if I say background red, Let's close for now. You will see that our on our test one, two, three classes it, it's, it's locked right now. That's because it's, it's like that. But the root background red is applied. Great. Let's go back and delete that. Oh no, uh, let's keep it from there. From the custom CSS, you can assign it on uh, different media queries based on your the breadpond that you created in Bricks. So I can jump on the tablet and you'll see we don't have any custom CSS. But if I say roads, roads, sorry, background, green. Okay, let's come back here. And on tablet is background green. And on desktop is background red. So you can jump here, you can copy to clipboard the value from the custom CSS for any reason. And on the bottom, you have the generated CSS from Bricks. So you can have an overview, an overview of what's going on on the front end. And as you see, we have a desktop. Oh, th this is um, a value that, that um, I inserted in uh, the input of Bricks. Then we have our custom CSS, the background red that is applying correctly to the test one, two, three. And we also have our media query with the background green. And you can also copy to clipboard and pass it where, wherever you want. Okay, this is uh, a quick overview of, uh, of the possibilities. Let me just show you a couple of more things. In the list, you see, I forgot to mention, you, th you see that the test one, two, three has uh, a different opacity compared to the other ones. That means that this class is active somewhere. So you don't have to click on each class to see if the class is not uh, is active or not. By the way, if it's not active, you will see this message. This class isn't set on any element inside this page. But you can check them just by uh, looking at the list and the one that that are lighter are the ones that are active on some elements. And of course you can see, uh, I'm not sure if I mention it, but uh, on the right of each class, you can already see that if a class has any style assigned to it, if it's locked or it's not, you can, oh sorry, I completely forgot to say you can duplicate any class from here. So let's say test one to three, we want to create a new class, new class, and it will create test one to three new, already selected, you see, 
already um, focused on the custom CSS, so you can start um, changing, of course, the CSS and it will, it will apply. And of course, you can uh, uh, rename it like this. So you can easily duplicate. Um, you won't duplicate the same name. So if I duplicate this one and again, it will be new, new and again new 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 so you will always have um, a, new, a unique class when duplicating um, if you insert invalid character it will uh, mention it and it won't save and if you save an existing class it will also tell you that the class already exists so you're fine and the last the last one i want to mention is to add a class you can add any class from here just uh, clicking on this field and let's say test uh, three four five enter and it will create on the bottom of the list test three four five already selected already focused and you can start um you can start styling it correctly as you see you can also delete it so uh, be aware that I decided to not make uh, uh, a two-step for this because I know that Bricks has a two-step two a, confirmation, a confirmation step but uh, in my opinion we are using the class manager to uh, be more productive and be more um, quicker when we do action on the class, so we should be aware that, uh, that what we are doing, the icons are quite small, so the, um, the possibility to make an error is decreased. It's always happened, but it, 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 it is possible. And uh, if you click on it, it will, it will delete the class, okay, and it won't be there any, anymore. That way I can, I can quickly decide and let's say I create um, a lot of classes uh, maybe using the class converter and I just figured out I misspelled the class okay and probably I want to delete all of them really really quick okay I don't want the confirmation I want to delete all of them in, on the fly and recreate them maybe right so uh, keep in mind that if you delete a class um, by mistake just don't don't uh, save and just reload the page and the class will be back as they were before by the way you can also use the undo uh, method from bricks um, it worked although uh, there might be some visual um, issues but the classes are uh, restored so um, you could also use that uh, use that so for example if I delete the evil test here and I, and I do uh, command uh, zeta it won't show up but if I reopen we have um, the error tests again so if I delete them and do uh, and do command uh, uh, zeta I don't know what to say in English uh, we, we, we don't see them again when we press, we press that uh, this shortcut but if I re reopen it it will show again uh, sorry I didn't do enough but if I only do okay and we have a test here okay just this is was just to show you the class manager I think it's really powerful it could it could change a bit of your workflow if you are um, confident in writing CSS you are not able to do that on the fly you don't have to rely on the on the bricks inputs and I think it's really, really powerful. Um, yeah. 
let's, uh, let's, let's continue and show you the component class manager. So to enable the, co the component class manager, you have to go in the builder tweaks, go to the structure panel, and you see a new option, component class manager. It's also experimental, of course, for the same reasons I exposed earlier. It's safe, and let's refresh. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Okay, so, um, sorry, I didn't want to use this one. I just created another page with a, a, a dummy section. Let's just restart this one instead. I'm using this one because I already uh, run the, um, the class converter. So each section has a class assigned. And if I click on the section, right click to uh, open the contextual menu, you will see a new menu item, Component Class Manager. Let's click on it. And the difference from the Global Class Manager is now we are only showing the classes that are applying to the selected component. So a, comp a, comp a component, of course, is based on the selected item and all the children's. So if you click on the on the roots of the of the component, open the class manager, and you can quickly show and manage the uh, classes from this component. All the same option applied apply you can't of course drag and drop because it's filtered okay but you can create um, new classes like like before so hero and let's make test one two three if i enter i will have my hero test even if it's uh, not applying right now because i didn't assign this class to the component it will show uh, in this session, okay, so I can come back here and assign my test one, two, three. But that if I reopen again the component class manager, the component class manager, it won't show up anymore because we assume that uh, you have time in this session to apply the new, the newly created class to your component. And if you didn't, that means that you probably want, don't want to see it. And it just filtering again the um, the classes that are assigned to the component, and the same thing is good for the duplicate. You can duplicate uh, any class from the component. You can style them, but if you go away from the class manager and don't assign them to uh, any element of the component. When you will reopen it, you won't see, see them anymore. Of course, you can apply the uh, same filter as described as before. Okay, I think it's everything for the class compo the com the class manager and the component class manager. I just want to see to show you a couple of new addition in this version. The first one is drag and drop your elements classes let's go back in the theme settings and class and styles you'll see a new option drag and drop classes let's activate and save the settings and we'll uh, uh, refresh this one instead okay and i will create um, I will actually create two new um, two new classes. Let's call this one red one, and in red one will we put a background red. So it's clicked. Okay, and I will do a green one. Enter and 
background green. Okay. That's good for now. Let's apply this one. Uh, where are they? At the end, red one and green one. You see that both um, classes are competing on the same property, the background. And for some reason, the green is, is um, winning the competition right now. Okay? But now with this new um, this new tweak, you can reorder these classes here. So if you, you can drag and drop, if we click and move the class here, we can reposition the order of the class. Let's just put green before red and save and see it on the front end. And the green for now is winning, right? Let's refresh to make sure. Okay, the green is winning. Let's go back and change the order of green. Oh, because I'm using green, sorry. I must use green one. The one that we just created. Okay. Let's resave. Just to see if it, make, it made any difference. So the background is green. Let's just now change the order. Sorry up here, save, and reload my page. And <laughs> the green is, is also winning. That's really strange. Okay. I believe it might be some... Oh, okay, no. Now, the red is is um, is winning. I'm not sure what happened before, but uh, I want to illustrate this because normally on a, a normal CSS uh, st standard CSS style sheet, the order of the class on an on, on, on an element um, has no impact, right? But in bricks it does. So I would call it uh, so something between a bug. And um, or an inconsistency. I'm not sure how to define this, but in bricks, the order of the classes to attach to an element has some importance, right? That's because um, bricks uh, dynamically build the classes on the page, and it output the first class that, it, when passing your your page. The first class assigned to an element will be put on the on, on the front end, and so um, the priority of the, the the class will depend on the order when they are appearing inside the DOM. Which is, in my opinion, is probably not the most optimal result because you probably want to have some control on the priority of the classes and that's why uh, I initially created the class manager the option to reorder this and and I was thinking that reordering the the, the classes here would have some control over the, the output of the class on the DOM but this is not like this um, it's um, so this order field won't have any impact on the order of the classes, on the priority of the classes on the front end right now. Um, I already suggested to Thomas to uh, change the way that Bricks manage the classes because it would be really great to have some control over the specificity of, of the classes on front end. And, um, and he said probably we'll work on it, so let's hope. This is something that will uh, come up in the in the next releases, the next releases uh, of Bricks. But right now, the field, the order field, is just a cosmetic um, feature to reorder your classes here in the list. 
but if you have if you want to have an impact some control at least on the priority of the of the classes you will have to drag and drop this class these classes inside the element like i showed you before okay um well the other one are really really quick but i want to show you that now if you open the uh, templates it will automatically select the import image uh, checkbox there is no option for this i uh, think that it should be the default um, in bricks because uh, a lot of time i imported a template and i just forgot to check these import images i had to delete the section and reinsert again and uh, yeah i think the the default the default one should be importing the image but you you can still of course disable it and uh, and import without images okay uh added an option to transform the heading yeah let's go really really quick on this uh if you go on elements uh, we have a new set text uh, input as a text area for headings or oh, it, it's already applied so if i click on an heading right now I don't have an input anymore, but I have a text area that I can uh, manage. And of course, I have the dynamic data, the dummy content, and the AI, just like the other inputs. Um, uh, this adding, build mode, uh, the other one are, are really a uh, small announcement, but um, the SVG, for, for example, if we uh, now had an icon and open the icon I set uh, the, def the default library is now an SVG so it's not uh, Tenify anymore because some users don't want to enqueue the old design library from Tenify or, or Fontauson and just want to open the SVG and now this is a, a quick way to open this window and just set your SVG. Um, new shortcuts, so I added to the list the code element and the template element that was requested by some of you. Um, yeah, so this was um, the, the sidebar here wasn't um, sticky anymore. But now, as you see, it is sticky again. So this has been solved. Let me delete this section I created just for the example. And yeah, the other one I uh, back fix is oh, uh, just this one. The, the as you see, I have now a one column display for the list. I can of course change the two column, three column, but now there is this new addition which is the one column list for elements and of course you can pin uh, uh, like the other one and it will just show just add the others but just on one column okay i believe this is it um i hope you enjoy it it's, it's really i'm really excited to release this uh, this class manager i'm uh, I'm willing to gather all your feedback and, and improve it on, uh, on the future release. My plan is to, um, to start adding more stuff. So this is the first version. The first version uh, include all the, the basics function that, I, that I'm willing to use when I use a class manager. The second step, which is not included in this release, but uh, uh, hopefully in the, in the next one, will be the bulk action. So if I want to rename um, in bulk all, all the classes or delete in bulk all the classes or duplicate in bulk all the classes. So um, sorting the classes in bulk, all action that imply uh, more than one class. And I'm willing to insert this in a, in a future release, not this one. And, um, and yeah, of course, uh, as always, let me know what you think. Uh, your feedbacks are really, really appreciated. And I, and I offer you them to improve 
the overall um, experience of Advanced Themer. And let's finish here. Have a, good, a great day, guys, and uh, see you for the next one.